Repairing damaged model steam boilers is something that I very seldom do. Replacing a damaged boiler bush and annealing the area of a dent. Or is the word dint? I think the way we pronounce it in my part of England is dint, but it's spelt dent. If you watch my YouTube channel frequently, you will realise that recently I've been sent quite a collection of model steam boilers. And the plan is, I pick the best of the bunch to build a steam plant with, and I can have the rest. I've already selected the 504 boiler that I'm going to use. It's not in this picture, it's up on the shelf. Most of these Stuart boilers are okay, but a couple of them, the 500 series, are not very good. This one, for instance, has been modified by someone, and I use the term modified very loosely. One of the bushes has been drilled out severely to suit some sort of fitting. Then it's been threaded with a thread that I'm not familiar with. I'm going to attempt to repair this boiler by changing the bush for a new one. And the first part of the job is to remove the old one. As soon as I get it hot enough, I'm going to use a pair of pliers and literally pull the bush away from the boiler. When I finally got the area hot enough, this bush that was badly drilled out separated into two parts. All I managed to do was remove the outer ring. I'll let this boiler cool and move on to the other one. This one has a massive dent or dent in the side of it. And the problem is, the metal it's made from is copper, and copper work hardens very easily. So what I'm trying to do here is soften the metal, or anneal it, using a blowtorch. I need to heat the area that I need to work on until it turns red. I'm using a small blowtorch head because I don't want to really blast every part of the boiler and destroy all of the other joints. I don't have any oxyacetylene equipment, which is great for heating really small areas. After quite a while, because this video is heavily edited, the area did turn red, so then I removed the heat and let it cool. Normally when annealing, you quench the part in water to rapidly cool it, but that's not a good idea with a model boiler. I had to let the boiler cool slowly in its own time. Here I'm using a sanding disc to clean up the entire area around the bush. It's very important when soldering, silver soldering or soft soldering, to make sure that the area is very, very clean. I'm going to silver solder a new bush in place. It's no good just cleaning the front surface with the sander. I need to make sure that the inner area of the hole is clean too. For this, I'm using a round file. In this clip, there are two boiler bushes. The one on the right is quite a deep one, and the one underneath where I'm filing, which shouldn't really be there, is a genuine Stuart bush that came with a pressure gauge siphon. Once I'd cleaned and enlarged the hole to a sufficient size to take the bush, I placed it in position to check whether it was a tight fit, because it does not want to be a tight fit. If the bush is a really tight fit in the hole, then the silver solder won't penetrate, so I filed the hole until the bush was a very easy fit. By moving the fire bricks on my brazing hearth, I propped up the boiler into this position, and here I'm applying some flux. This is Easy Flow number no. 2 Silver Solar Flux, and I'm applying it to the hole and to the bush. The first thing to do is to warm up the boiler in this area. The reason for this is so that the water doesn't violently boil away and spread the flux everywhere. In this video, there are many places to fit innuendo and the odd girlfriend joke. All I would like to say is, as a male of 68 years of age, I've had plenty of experience, and I do know that the first thing you must not do is go straight for the bush. It's only when all of the water has evaporated that it's a good idea to apply the blowtorch directly to the boiler bush, and here I'm doing just that. What I generally do in these videos, just to make it so that you can see when the temperature is correct, is apply silver solder prematurely, like I'm doing here. At the moment there is insufficient heat, it's melting the silver solder, but it takes a while longer before the silver solder flashes around the joint. I have worked on model steam boilers doing things like this for many years, I do not do it for customers, I do not do it commercially, so please don't ask me to repair your boiler. This small Stuart boiler is actually brazed, it's not silver soldered, so that's great, because I'm not applying enough heat to melt the brazing on the existing bushes or the seams. If this boiler repair is successful, along with the one with the big dint in the side, I will be pressure testing them anyway, so I'll find out if there are any leaks that have developed. And for the pressure test, I will use water. It will be a hydraulic pressure test. On this boiler to 120 pounds per square inch, which is twice working pressure, 
but on the other boiler with the dint in it, I'm really going to ramp up the pressure and see whether I can push out the dint. I'm not very hopeful on this, but I'll give it a shot. It's very important to make sure that the boilers are cool before dropping them into the acid bath. So I've tied them together, here's the acid bath, and in they go. These 500 boilers are very small and very light. They sank to the bottom when they filled it with acid. And that's it for now. I'm going to leave the boilers in the acid bath for about 24 hours. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.